Uh, good evening, everyone. What an opportunity that we have from the Hopeside Community Church that we could join together in this midweek prayer. The first time that we are trying to begin the midweek prayer. And uh, we're going to have it on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, here in the same place. Uh, I want to uh, take this opportunity to welcome each one of you. And we do have the uh, Zoom number. We have 811-749-11656. And if you are very much interested in being able to be a part of this midweek prayer, which you can start just from today. And please note the Zoom number is 811 749-11656 or you can be able to go on the youtube.com slash my home site and then you will be able to uh, get us uh, through uh, as we've been able to start up this prayer and I want to take this opportunity to thank Sister Pansy who initiated this midweek prayer and uh, uh, you and I know that prayer is power and the Bible says it's absolutely very clear in from Genesis to Revelation, we see the power of prayer. And I always have the slogan, more prayer, more power. Less prayer, less power. Uh, so we need power. Uh, until unless we have that power, you and I can never exist uh, on this earth. And what we see this unprecedented time, what is happening everywhere, social distancing, lockdown, and whole lot of things are happening. Where disunity is absolutely prevailing on earth. Natural disasters are taking place. Uh, the only way out is the solution from God and God alone. There is no solution from humankind will be able to solve the present situation what we are facing. Only God has to intervene. So you and I have to approach the God eternal to guide us through, to help us through, to take us through this unprecedented time. In this uncertain time. So that's one of the reasons. Hopeside Community Church. We want to make sure that every Wednesday. We segregate this half an hour. For prayer. And prayer alone. Uh, so I hope that you. Will be able to join us. And be blessed by this prayer meeting. And encourage us. Support us. So that in turn we could be a blessing to many people. Who will be able to see online. So I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you, especially who are watching online uh, for this midweek prayer at Hope Site. And I hope that you and I will be blessed uh, as we seek the Lord in prayer. And to begin with, let's all join in in singing this song called as Sweet Heart of Prayer. Sweet Heart of Prayer. Hymn number 478, wherever you might be, if you have a hymnal, it is 478, 478. It's entitled as Sweet Hour of Prayer. So whenever you might be, if you want to plan to join in and sing with us, and let's join in and sing in this song before we could begin this hour of prayer. Let's join in the song. Sing and pray. 
God in heaven, we thank you for this hour of prayer, where we could join together, O oh Father, in putting forth our petition before you, because we know the answer has to come only from the throne of grace, and only Jesus, the solution for all the problems where humanity is facing today. We come to your throne of grace without full of gratitude and thanksgiving. The Lord of heaven, may your mercy endure in our lives as we pause for a moment before your throne of grace. The Lord, enrich us with your spirit so that we might be able to experience your joy, peace, and happiness as we start this midweek prayer. And so, your Father, may your presence. Help us, O oh Father, to draw closer with you. And help us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And may we could be a part of you every moment of our life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome each one of you who are watching online uh, for this midweek prayer from the Hopeside Community Church. The Bible is absolutely very much clear. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, I don't like that word called anything, if you and I been able to ask whom? God. How should we ask God? In confidence. In approaching God. That we ask anything according to His will, and the Bible says it very clearly. He hears us. My Lord is not a deaf God. My God is not a God who has not been able to he give heed to the petition that we put forth for him. The Bible says it very clearly in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. This is the words of Jesus Christ. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he says, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And since the Spirit of the Lord was there upon Jesus Christ, and since he was able to approach the poor, and the Bible says it very clearly, that he was ordained, he was anointed. And the, the very reason that the Lord of heaven, our God, the Father, sent Jesus to this earth for this very reason to preach the gospel to the poor. Why do you think so? The gospel has to be preached to the poor. Most probably, the poor are more receptive than the rich. The Bible says it's very hard for a camel to pass on through the needle's eye. But I'm telling you, the Bible is absolutely very, very, very clear. For you and me, the rich man, it's very, very difficult for a rich man to pass this world. God says this absolutely very clearly. Poor, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek. And the Lord is calling each one of us because we have come short of the glory of God. So we are poor in one way or the other. So Jesus came down to this earth to reach out to the poor. And he says, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you might be watching today in the spirit we pray. And I assure you in the name of Jesus, if you and I have been brokenhearted, when your joy has been absolutely snatched away from Satan, if you and I are suffering one way or the other with a brokenness, you know, Jesus loves brokenness because he can fix anything. He can fix your heart. He can fix mine. You know, whatever the condition it might be, however you might be, 
is the greatest physician now one year. Not only the physical physician, but even the spiritual physician. He is the healer. And Jesus says it very clearly. I have come down to this earth to heal the broken hearted. Are you broken hearted today by your brothers and sisters in Christ? I urge you that Jesus is available. And Jesus has been part of each one of our lives. Is he ever ready to bestow his blessing upon each one of us? If you and I have been broken hearted and plead with him, Jesus is ever ready to heal each one of our lives. And the Bible says it very clearly further in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. If I have to read further, it says, uh, 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 He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. If you and I have been captivated by Satan, if you and I have been captured by this world, if you and I are somehow captivated from sin, at this is the time Jesus is ever ready to what? Be able to deliver you, the captives. And then he says, and recovering the sight of the blind, so set at liberty them that are bruised. The Bible is absolutely very much clear. Since the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus, since the Lord appointed Jesus Christ to preach the gospel to the poor, and he has sent to heal the brokenhearted, and he has been sent to preach the deliverance for the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are poorest. If you and I have been curtailed in one way or the other under the jurisdiction of Satan, Jesus is ever ready to deliver you and me, to heal the brokenhearted, the anxiety, the grief, the sickness, the problems, whatever the human eye might be facing today, and Jesus is calling you in this midweek. Wherever you might be, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you no need to fear in approaching God because just I read in first John that you and I should be absolutely very confident in approaching God, knowing that Jesus is ever ready to deliver in whatever the circumstances that you and I might be. What a beautiful assurance, right? The Lord in his own infinite mercy is ready. Don't be timid to come to the throne of grace. Don't back up yourself in approaching God. When everything absolutely failed, Jesus is ever ready. And that is the message that we have today. And that is the beauty of who Jesus is all about. You and I have an opportunity. You and I have an opportunity to come to his throne of grace. So I recommend Jesus once again this midweek. Once again the Bible says it very clearly. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good is sweeter than honey. It depends on our approach towards our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who is not only the King of Kings. Well, is not only the Lord of Lords, is not only the Savior, He is a friend of you and me. Just the way that you and I could be able to approach the closest one to communicate a heart and mind and soul. You and I could communicate with a heart, mind and soul opposing Jesus as the closest friend. And is ever, and is ever willing to help each one of us in every angle of life. Yes, in the spirit we pray. I want to ask you in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you in trouble? You don't know the way where you are supposed to go. You don't know how things are happening. When the whole world is groaning with a lot of sin. Everywhere you see natural calamities which is taking place. Everywhere you'll be able to see sickness looming around. Everywhere you'll be able to see a whole lot of difficulties happening. Joblessness. People don't know where to go, how to go about it. Go to the right person, that is Jesus Christ. Because the solution lies only within him. Because he is the one who holds the future. Nobody knows what happens tomorrow. Nobody knows how things are going to happen tomorrow. Only God of heaven knows what is going to happen. And he holds that tomorrow. So you don't need to be worried about. You don't need to be able to be timid upon. 
When God trusts this absolutely on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, He's going to carry you through in every angle. Yes, Jesus is the demonstration of the visible power. Jesus is demonstrating His visible power in each one of our lives. And that's what happened 2,000 years ago. You know, blind men just came to Jesus to be healed. You know, people who were suffering with sickness came to Jesus to be healed. And they never went just empty handed. You see, they were filled with joy. They went and testified about what Jesus was able to do. So, Jesus says, He came to recover us from which crushes us, whatever that might be. Many a times, the wrongs that we have done has been crushing us. Many a times, our sins have been crushing us. Our wrong way of thinking is crushing you and me. You and I have been caught up with the bondages which is crushing you in every angle. Your affliction has been crushing you. Your disease has been crushing you. Your sickness has been crushing you. Your mental health has been crushing you. Your anxiety is crushing you. Both physical and mental. Jesus is ever ready to relieve you from the bondage of whatever you might be going through. And that is the assurance that we can be able to see that in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, in the words of Jesus Christ. Hope side wants to assure you in the name of Christ that you and I will be able to be a part of it. And we are here to spread the word the way how the Lord wants us to. And we want to just give Jesus Christ the way how he is. So that you and I could come to Jesus the way how we are. You don't need to change yourself to come to Christ. Jesus wants you the way how you are. Whatever the wrongs that you might be committed, whatever the sins that you might be committed, whatever the bondage that you've been undergoing, I don't know what is the affliction that you have, I don't know what is the disease, or I don't know what is the sickness, or I don't know what is the mental health or physical or anxiety, whatever the difficulty it might be, just come to the throne of grace the way how you are, and Jesus will be able to heal you the way how he wants to, because the Bible says, we come to his throne of grace, boldly approaching him boldly. And is ever willing to be able to embrace you. He doesn't want to shun you. The very meaning, the very message, what Jesus was talking about in Luke chapter 4 was, and that is one of the reasons that he has come. He never had any reason to come here to this earth. He came down to this earth to save Either it might be physical maladies, either it might be mental maladies, either it might be spiritual maladies, either it might be social, whatever it is. Uh, you just come here because Jesus is the one who wants to be a part of you. And that is the vision that he has to each one of us. At this part of the evening, I want to invite each one of you. I want to invite each one of you. Let us not underestimate the power of Jesus Christ. Let us not underestimate the mission of Jesus Christ is ever willing with his outstretched arm to be able to bestow and bless each one of us. As we start this with me prayer, and I believe this little message will bring you hope. This will bring you closer to Jesus Christ. This will help you to know who Christ is all about. So that as we pray together, and I believe in the name of Jesus, that your physical sickness or your mental anxiety or whatever it might be might be relieved because we know that we have a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is alive and who is living. Who was yesterday, who will be there today and who will be there tomorrow. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you in the name of Christ, we all be joined together. And approach him boldly in the throne of grace. And I know that he's going to answer our prayers tonight here. Do you have the faith? Will you be able to approach God confidently? Will you know that as we pray today that your sicknesses will be healed? Do you know that today if you've been able to kneel down and seek the Lord in prayer, that your anxiety will be absolutely taken away? Do you have the faith? The Bible says it absolutely very clearly. You need the mustard seed of faith. That's all, nothing else. That mustard seed of faith. And I'm so confident 
if you have that little faith that this prayer meeting will certainly help you to be healed. And I believe the Lord's will be done in each one of our lives. And anyone has any prayer requests in this part of the evening? And you could certainly be able to text us to 240-997-6390. Once again, I repeat, if you have any prayer request, you can test, text us immediately to 240-997-6390. Or you can be able to uh, just uh, type uh, while you are in the Zoom meeting so that we could be able to have your prayer request and certainly we could pray for you. And I know that you will not, you will not be disappointed because the Lord is speaking to each one of us. The Bible says it very clearly in 1 John chapter 5 verse 16. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray that God will give them life. I refer to those who sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that you should pray about that. But the Bible is absolutely very clear that anyone, anyone, in whatever the situation we might be, in whatever the sinfulness that we might be, but still accepting Jesus as a personal Savior and come to His throne of grace, the Bible gives us an assurance that uh, His sins will be forgiven uh, and certainly His prayers will be answered. And that's one of the reasons in First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11, the Bible says, Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. The Bible says, Look to the Lord and His strength. And seek his face always. The same Second Chronicles chapter 6 verse 21. The Bible says, Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place and when you hear, I forgive. So God in his own infinite mercy has given a number of assurance if you and I be able to approach him boldly in his throne of grace and is ever willing to forgive our sins, number one, because sin is the one which causes all the maladies, all the physical difficulties, anxiety, and affliction, sickness, disease, mental health, whatever it might be. It's because of sin. The Bible says, I'm here to forgive your sins and I'm here to listen to your plea and I'm willing to be able to what? Answer your prayer. Don't doubt God, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May we be undauntedly seeking. I know that He is going to answer our prayer. And once again, I want to recommend once again, if anyone has any prayer requests, please to make sure text us to 240-997-6390. And we are here to pray for you in this midweek. Okay, here is a prayer request from uh, our own uh, member and supporter, Sister Pansy. She requests that we pray because of the grief that she is going through for her children and for Hopeside Church as well, so that Hopeside can be instrumental in winning souls. So we do be able to pray, okay, for Sister Prancy, uh, as she has lost her father. I know she's unable to get, uh, you know, come out of the grief. Uh, and I hope the Lord of Heaven uh, will be able to uh, help her to get out of this grief. Uh, Sister Prancy, I assure you in the name of Jesus, as I pray today, I believe that you will be relieved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know that you will have the peace that passes all understanding. And for her children, she is grieving for her children, and she is praying uh -huh. for them as uh, she wants us to pray, so that they will okay. give their hearts to Christ okay. and uh, for Hopeside mm -hmm. Church to be instrumental in winning souls. Mm -hmm. And I will read two verses here in the mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. We have this assurance. Mm -hmm that God is ever watching over all his children mm -hmm. and he is ready to answer our prayers. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, 6 mm -hmm. it says, do not be anxious about anything uh -huh. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication mm -hmm. with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God mm -hmm. so we can thank God in advance for the uh, answer prayers that he will surely make happen mm -hmm. so the assurance is and the, and the command is to not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, by what? Prayer and supplication, and with thanksgiving, let our request be made known to God. Thank you, Brother Anand, for that uh, beautiful words that you've been able to give to us. So, uh, as we pray now for Sister Pansy uh, and her family members, May the good Lord be able to guide her through, help her through to come out of all this grief that she's been able to undergo. And may the peace that passes all understanding may never bet in Sister Pansy and her family service. And I'm certainly going to pray for okay, the Hopeside Community Church. And we have a great project coming up. And hope the Lord of heaven, if he delays his coming, and that we could be able to fulfill uh, the little task that God has given to us. So I request each one of you, wherever you might be watching today, I want you to please to keep remembering uh, Hope Side Community just so that we could be used as an instrument used by the righteous right hand of Jesus Christ. And of course, we do want to pray for uh, people who have been suffering with a pandemic and people who have lost their jobs and uh, people who have been suffering from the natural disasters which has taken place. And you know, in California, there's a lot of fire and still not been able to be quenched. And of course, Sally, okay, the hurricane has been hitting. Uh, the coastal belt of U.S. and uh, we will remember all this in our prayers. I don't know the Lord of Lord in His own infinite mercy today will be able to hear our prayers and He will be able to relieve us from our burden. Let's seek the Lord in prayer. Praise is God in heaven. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your name because you are our God and you made us your children. There is nothing good in each one of us, O oh Father. We are sinful natured human beings. We are clothed with unrighteousness. But still, O oh Father, with a sinful nature, with a sinful heart, we come to your throne of grace. Knowing that the Lord, in his own infinite mercy, will be able to accept us as we are. Because the only way that you, that each one of us can be relieved is by Jesus and Jesus alone because he is the only solution for the world's problem. Yes, Lord, when we look into things, what is happening in and around the world, we know that sin has marred each one of our lives. Oh, the world is growing with sin. And because of that, oh, Father, a lot of diseases has crept in. Natural calamities which is taking place. Yes, so Father, pandemics are absolutely in control of our lives. But I believe in the name of Jesus, my Jesus is most powerful than any of the sickness and the difficulties and the natural calamities which is taking place. It's greater than everything. <clears throat> we trust in your name. We come to your throne of grace. I want to pray for every individual who is suffering with sickness. And I believe that the name pure stand of Christ will be able to touch them for healing physically, spiritually, mentally now because we know that we have something in our son to you, O oh Father. May this praise be answered and anyone who is listening to this prayer, O oh Father, might be touched by the name pure stand of Christ. Be healed in whatever the difficulty they might be facing through, O oh Father. Especially, I want to pray for Sister Pansy and her lovely children our sisters and their lovely children and their family members. Please be merciful, O oh Father, to them. Lord, for they are in distress. Their eyes might have grown weak with sorrow. Their soul and their body with grief. And their heart is been broken. And their mind is exhausted. I cry to you, O oh Lord. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. I want you, O oh Father, that the rain pierced hand of Christ be able to touch them. 
all we can be able to do tell them how they feel oh father when they ask you to keep track of their sorrows oh lord of heaven continue to be with them oh father may the mighty hands of christ rain on them as they grieving and mourning oh father with the loss of their father and the request that they are unable to come out of that one oh father I believe tonight that the Lord of heaven will have mercy upon them, be able to touch them, giving them an opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good and all their griefs might be absolutely evaporated before them. And they will have an opportunity to testify about what the Lord has been able to do. The Bible is absolutely very clear. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That's what Matthew chapter 5 was for, tells of my father. And this family might be mourning. Please do comfort them now. Wrap around uh, your arms around them, O oh Father. And hold them tight. Uh, send your angels of mercy to them, O oh Father. Shower your comfort on them through those uh, who are been able to depend on them. And keep them far from all sin and difficulties. And certainly, O oh Father, they might find grace in your sight. O oh Father, this part of the Evening, O oh Father, as hopes I come in the church, we come to your throne of grace. Yes, Lord, we need you. We need your strength, O oh Father. Without which it will be impossible that we can move forward. O oh Lord of heaven, I don't want to place hopes I church to you, O oh Father. We might be few in number. But I believe, O oh Father, the Spirit of the Lord will be able to speak to each one of our lives so that we could do the best as possible to the community. And anyone who comes in and out of our life, O oh Father, may we could represent your love. Love every individual equally. May we be guided by your spirit as we, O oh Father, always tread on the paths of righteousness in these last days. Use us mightily. We, you know the plans that you have for Hopeside Church. And I hope the Lord of Heaven uh, will be able to bestow his blessing upon us so that, O oh Father, your will be done in Hopeside Community Church. At this part of the evening, thank you for giving us an opportunity. In this midweek, O oh Father, we could come to your throne of grace with heart full of gratitude and thanksgiving for everything that you have done. As we start this with we pray, O oh Father, may your presence be felt there. May we could experience your joy, peace, and happiness in our lives as we kneel down and seek you, O oh Father. May the presence of the Lord be able to fill our lives and our heart, mind, and soul so that as people hear and as people, O oh Father, your children might be able to listen to you. And I know that they will be blessed and be a blessing to many people who come in on their life. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your wonderful words of life. Thank you, O oh Father, for the answered prayer this evening. And if it is time with, till we meet again, let your presence go with each one of our lives. I ask this few mercies in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, I want to thank each one of you who could join in this midweek prayer and i hope that you're going to support us by uh, watching and be blessed and certainly encourage us too so that we also might be able to do the best as possible in taking this gospel this truth and the healing ministry to uh, different parts of the poor people are watching and certainly to different parts of people or oh father who could be able to be a part of Hopeside community church once again i want to thank you for being with us i hope to see you on the sabbath morning until then, may the Spirit of the Lord be able to go with you. May God bless you. Have a lovely, safe, and a beautiful, joyous night. May God bless you.